Hi, I'm Russ Breeden, an executive director of the National Center for the Biotechnology Workforce, located here at Foresight Technical Community College in downtown Winston-Salem in the Innovation Quarter. And uh, we have a very, very special guest today, Dr. San Yinni, Chief Commercial Operating Officer of Metalytics in RTP, North Carolina. And Trevor, I just want to be able to uh, welcome you again to SciTech, where this is SciTech season and we're putting them together. And we and I want to welcome both you and Sam uh, to SciTech today. Uh, Sam, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much, Russ. Great. Sam, thanks very much for joining us. I know we have a busy schedule, My but pleasure. thanks for taking time in. And Trevor, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Russ. Thank you. Great. Um, Dr. Yanni, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? You have a fabulous background having both a PhD and an MBA. Yeah, I'd be glad to. So as, as you mentioned, I have a PhD. It's in plant physiology um, and got it a long time ago. Um, and, you know, so I, right after I finished my PhD, I moved down here from, I got my PhD at Virginia Tech. I moved down here and started to work for what was um, Rome Blanc, um ad company, now part of Bear Crop Science and, and doing pesticide discovery and development. And as I was working there um, in, in a kind of a technical and scientific role, um, quickly realized that, um, you know, one of the rewards for being good at an technical role was getting into more of the project management and the business aspects of the company. Um, and so that's what inspired me to go get my MBA and, and add that in addition to the PhD. So um, over the years, I made a few uh, career transitions, kind of focusing on the PhD and, and other aspects of technology, but have, have pretty much always been in kind of the technology commercialization, product development roles, um, sometimes more on the technical side, sometimes more on the business side of things, um, but been doing that for 25 to 30 years now around this whole uh, technology commercialization and, and, and technology development. Excellent. How did you get involved with Metalytics? So, um, you know, early on in my career, um, and this guy's goes to some of the other topics I think are relevant here, is I did not do much networking. Um, you know, I put my head down, went to work, uh, went home, dealt with family things, and, and really didn't do much networking. Um, but, you know, as as I aged and, and got out into the workforce a little bit more, I realized the importance of networking. And it's been networking that has led me to a lot of, of my opportunities throughout throughout my career. Um, so anyway, one of my networking events, I met um, one of the original co-founders of Metalytics and um, was fascinated about the technology that, that um, they were developing called metabolic flux analysis. And we'll talk more about that in, in a few minutes. Um, and, and it was somewhat related to another technology, an, an area that I had worked in the metabolomics space. Again, we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, but, but it was through networking that I, I learned about metalytics and metabolic flux analysis. And, and I saw it as a way to uh, extract additional value um, in the metabolism area. And so I got really excited about it. And um, one thing went to another. And um, Eric Cumming and I uh, uh, um, joined Metal 17 and, and took the company in an entirely different uh, direction. Well, that's um, really interesting. And, and, and Sam, I just want to come back to the fact that actually through the networking, we met, which was kind yeah. of cool. <laughs> yes, yes. So, you know, that's very important for young people, you know, that are coming up through their careers, I think. I think you made a really, really interesting point there that, you know, sometimes you have to get out of your comfort zone too. So you might be trained, I don't know, in empirical science or whatever. And then you 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 have a sense or a feeling that it's important time to expand this to expand necessarily out of where you are and get into something else. Like you, you had a natural tendency to want to get into the business aspects of, of what was going on and, and what you were doing in, in, in your earlier days. And so you went and did your MBA and, and you know, I always tell people, you know, where you start isn't necessarily where you, be, where you end. So it's very yeah. important to keep an open mind and also uh, keep your skills sharp and train up. Tell, tell, tell us more about what Metalytics does. So um, if you think about cells as factories, so there are lots and lots of products out there that are produced in, in, in the industry called biomanufacturing. And in the, in the biomanufacturing industry, companies use cells to produce various products. And on one end of the extreme, you can look at beer and wine, 
as, as one biomanufactured product. On the other end of the extreme, you could look at some of these very, very complex um, cancer treating drugs produced in biomanufacturing. But all of these products are produced in these bio factories. And like any factory, these cellular factories take in raw materials. Um, they put those raw materials through hundreds of, of different transformations to produce final product. Um, what's unique about um, biomanufacturing is those factories, there's you know millions of them in a bioreactor. And, and each one, although they they produce the same output product, they they each factory can act a little bit differently. And so Metalytics is all about giving visibility into what that factory is doing. How is that factory in, taking in the raw material or raw materials and converting it to product? And once you have that visibility into what the cells are doing, then you can figure out how to make it more efficient, how to control it, how to manipulate it so that you can get a higher productivity of the desired product. And higher productivity doesn't always necessarily mean quantity. It also means quality. Um, so, again, what Metalytics does is just provide visibility in, in what these cellular factories are doing. And then with that visibility, you can figure out how to make them more efficient. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about that, Sam. Um, you know, I think that was just a, a wonderful analogy, um, you know, uh, and, you know, the company is, it, can you describe, like, how big a company it is and, you know, yeah. um, what kinds of jobs would be there? Right. So I'm going to back up a little bit and do a little bit more description and, and actually use another sure. analogy as well. Um, an another good analogy is thinking about real-time traffic flow. Um, so, so you have a paper map in front of you and, and, you know, you want to get across town and you can kind of map out a route to get from point A to point B. Um, and, and that route may be very clear and direct, um, assuming that you're just looking at the paper map. But when you put real-time traffic flow in there, there may be a much more circuitous route to get from point A to point B that will get you there a lot faster. So with, with that real-time traffic flow and that real-time traffic information, um, you can make better decisions. But understand what it takes to create real-time traffic flow, right? So so first of all, you have to have a way to collect the data. How do you measure ours that are moving system? Or in the case of the factory, how do you measure and monitor the raw material that's going through the factory? And if you can't see it, then you have to come up with creative ways to measure and monitor. So the first part of what Metalix does is we have some unique technologies and, and capabilities on how we can measure and monitor what's going on inside the cells. The second thing that you need in order to um, do real-time traffic or or any sort of a, a, a material flow through a factory is you need a, a model or a blueprint, you know, some way to kind of describe that factory or that or those traffic flows. And in today's um, modern age, that's done with various algorithms. So we track the raw material going through these cells using algorithms. Now you've got, you know, how much raw material is going in, you know, how much product's coming out, how much waste material is coming out, um, how much energy is required to operate the factory. And you take all of that data, you put it through some complex pieces of software, and now you can generate these real-time traffic flows or real-time flow of materials through the factory. Okay. Well, now what, what technology, what skills does it take to do something like that? Well, it takes all kinds of, of computer science skills. It takes a lot of mathematical and computer programming skills. Um, it takes some complex modeling skills. Um, so that that's kind of just on the on the software side of things. It takes chemical analytical skills in order to co to collect the data. Um, it takes um, an understanding of biochemistry and, and 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 the cellular metabolism in order to create the blueprint. And and, and that's all on the technical side of the, of the of the business. And then with any business, you know, you've got all the the accounting and the sales and the marketing and you know all, all of those things that that are associated with the business. Or, or, or yeah, you know, operating any business. So skill sets are, are very broad, um, ranging for what we do and, and and what's required for a company like Metalytics. 
You know, it, 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 it's really exciting. And how long has the company been in operation, Sam? Or can you so, tell me? Yeah. It, it, as I said, Eric and I took over the company in 2017. Yeah. Um, the original company was founded in 2015. Um, and it was founded by a guy by the name of Dr. Jamie Young and one of his students, a Dr. Laura Colby. And Dr. Young had created a piece of software and, and various companies and, and academic, academicians were, were using that software, but they were really struggling in, in how to use the software, how to design the experiments, how to collect the data. So they set up a consulting company. To, to help people understand how to do metabolic flux analysis and how to use the software. Um, it, it, so, Eric, again, I, I met Laura at a networking event and, and learned a little bit about metabolic flux analysis and was describing it to Eric. And, you know, he said, there, there's an interesting opportunity here to take this away from just a computer consulting company to a services company. And eventually we'll come back to software. Um, in, in this whole era of digital twins and, and how you can use the concept of digital twins to, to monitor and measure and control factories. But we're going to start with a services company um, because there's a big need for, you know, we recognize the biomanufacturing industry as, as big and growing, um, but that there wasn't a good way to, to measure and monitor and, and control what's going on inside those factories. So we took it, you know, saw, saw the opportunity to create a services company. So we started in 2017, um, actually started getting our, our first revenue, uh, again, as a little bit of a consulting, but um, moving into this hot services arena and then conducting metabolic flux analysis for various companies um, in, in 2018, 2019 timeframe. And it's been uphill ever since then, as far as revenues and and what we're doing. And again, now moving, um, you know, um, into the software as a services um, arena, as well as the the, the general services industry. So. Well, Sam, congratulations on the growth of the company and also the um, you know the strategy that you guys are using, which I think is is absolutely uh, excellent. Um, what what advice would you give for young people wanting to have a career in a very exciting field like you guys are doing? You know, there, there, there's a number of ways you can take that question. You know, and I think first of all, is just kind of recognize what, what you're looking for, what you want out of your, out of your, you know, your career and then, you know, know, know your personality a little bit. Um, you know, there are, there are some people that, um, you know, want to, you know, go to work, um, operate a piece of machinery or, or you know, and then just, you know, do that uh, every day. But e even that requires a certain level of, of skills and technology and, you know, the community college level kind of um, things, you know, because, you know, e to, to work in the biomanufacturing, biomanufacturing industry, and I think in a lot of industries today, you know, this basic understanding of, you know, how do you control a piece of machinery and, and, and that piece of machinery is going to be controlled by some sort of electronic system and it's going to have various sensors and monitors on it. So, you know, any type of manufacturing today, I think, starts with, with that and kind of knowing what, what you want as a person. Um, the, you know, and, and, you know, again, for what we do, it, it's, it's very technical. Um, and so, and a lot of what we've been doing for the, you know, in, in creating metalytics has really been focused on the technology and, and how do we develop the, the services and the software and things like that. So, so for us, you know, a higher level degree is, is absolutely required. And there are very few places in, in the world, in fact, where we can find that level of expertise, um, specifically in metabolic flux analysis. But having said that, you know, ge general advice, you know, network, um, you know, get out and know people, um, not only in your industry, but um, outside of your industry, um, you know, kind of on the marketing side of sales, uh, marketing and sales side of thing. You know, I, I'm one that that likes to, to sell and market based upon problem solving. And in order to problem solve, you have to kind of know a little bit about the industry. Um, and about the technologies used in that industry. Um, so, you know, you know have, have some sort of, of industry training or, or industry knowledge is a good thing to, to get as well. And, um, yeah, just don't don't be afraid to talk to people in the network as you go through your career as well. And for the entrepreneurs out there, 
I, I think that spending um, some time in a larger company so you kind of understand you know, what's required to operate a, a larger company is absolutely necessary before you can go out and start your own company. So, you know, for the entrepreneurs, spend a few years in a larger company before you go out on your own or, or go out and start a company or join a startup company. That's great advice. I, I, you know, I worked in large pharma for years and years, and then I had an opportunity to run my own company. And, uh, you know, once you run an, once you run your own company, your life is different. But your experience that you have running a small company really changes the way you think about things, which is really yeah. good. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, Sam, I want to thank you for coming on SciTech today. And um, Trevor, do you have any uh, reflections on our dialogue today? Um, well, I just want to say it was very nice learning about your company and sort of the ways that like students who might be interested in like are they learning more about sort of how to get their foot in the door with these type of like careers and um how to go about that and um we also gave some really great analogies as well earlier on when kind of talking about what metalytics does as a company so um very insightful thank you for sharing all that all right, my pleasure thank you you know sam uh just a final point i mean you, you gave you gave some very good um advice for young people and that how they're approaching their careers and stuff. And I'm thinking for people that actually have got it with respect to metalytics, and maybe perhaps they want to pursue um, a career as a scientist or, or as a software engineer uh, along the lines of what you're doing, what, what advice would you give those people specifically? Well, that's a, actually kind of a tough one, Russ, um, because um, you know at, at the end of the day, um, most of the people that are working for us, you know, like we've got one one guy that um, you know has a PhD in chemistry, but he spent a lot of his research doing biological type stuff, um, you know. So which you know a traditional guy going into chemistry probably wouldn't have thought about doing biology and chemistry, um, you know. And, and we've got people that you know came out of the software industry that are writing models around biochemistry. And he, and he probably had no idea that he was going to be doing that when he went into the software industry. Uh, you know, so, you know, again, I, I explore, you know, and if you've got, you know, an interest in, you know, just because you're a computer scientist doesn't mean you can't know something about factories or cars or, you know, just, just you know, electricity or anything else like that. And, you know, and you can, there, there's lots of interesting ways to marry those things together. Well, I, I think this has really been interesting from the point of view of, you know, how we're showing that, you know, there's there's a lot of IT in biotech. And some people would say, no, there's some biotech in IT. <laughs> so, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Yanis, I want you I want to thank you very much and thank the team at uh, Metalytics for uh, you being able to take the time to be with us today. And I want to thank you very much for joining our community via SciTech. Okay. My pleasure. We'll talk to you again soon.